Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at deep linking. So what's a deep link and why do you need one? Well, a deep link is basically just a URL, right? A link that navigates your users to a specific spot in your app. So let's take, for instance, you have an app that manages projects and those projects have tasks and you want to give a user of your app a specific link that will navigate them to a specific task within one of your projects. That's a deep link. So you can see how to be pretty powerful. Over the past couple of months, Glad has made it really easy for us to create deep links. So in today's video, I will show you two different methods of creating those links and how you can use them in your app. All right, so I'm going to start off with a brand new project here. I'm going to call this deep linking. I'm going to start with a Glide page and hit continue. Uh, Glide tables is fine. Create project. Okay, and instantly I created this new app with these things and categories of things. And I, oh, this pink color is driving me nuts. All right, let me change this to blue. That's better. All right, so here we have a list of things and we have categories of those things. Fine. We see that it's broken down into a couple different tabs. Right. And let's say we want to have a link that will navigate our users to this specific detail screen of this particular item. So the first thing you have to figure out is, do we need to store the link in the app somewhere? It's helpful in case you want to provide that link to other users or have them share out that link. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new column in this sheet called link to screen or let's call, let's call it deep link right okay and if we want to populate the deep link of all of our items we can do that right so on this title component here i'm going to add an action and i'm going to do something simple like create deep link all right and then this is just going to be a simple set column value all right so i'm going to set in this item, which is this row, here we see the deep link column I just created. And we can see if I hit the triple dots, there's an actual special value here called link to current screen. So that means I can set the link to this current screen into the deep link column. Okay. All right, so let's see what that does. If I hit create deep link, doesn't look anything really happened is because we don't have anything else besides that as part of our action. But if I go to the data editor, I now see I have this deep link here. Okay. Now look at, see how it has this kind of uh, pound sign in front, followed by the rest of probably the short code here of this link. Uh, the reason why it didn't give us a um, first part of our link, a path or a domain and a path and all that um, is because we haven't published our app yet. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm gonna publish the app first and let's just call this deep linking. Publish. So now you can see a couple things changed after we published. One, we can now preview the URL up here at the top of our builder, right? And now if I select create deep link and head to the data editor, now we have the full URL. Okay, so here we have the full URL of the deeplinking.glide.page followed by DL, which stands for deep link, you got it, followed by some code. We'll get that in just a second. Letter S, another identifier, letter R, and a final identifier. Okay, so let's go and visit another thing and create a deep link for that. And let's do one more thing and a deep link for that. All right, if I go ahead back to the deep link column here, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna create a dummy column. There we go. So we can see more of this deep link. All right, so you can see that these deep links actually follow a pattern, don't they? They have deep linking.glide.page followed DL, followed by that same code, that 6471C6. See that? followed by the S and that same code, followed by R and then a random code. Okay, now that random code used to be truly a random value. Glide um, has made some improvements since then. And actually this random value, this seemingly random value, is actually the row ID of this row. So to expose that, I can add a row ID column here hit done. All right. And so you can see the row ID 
of these three rows will match that identifier in the deep link. So yes, you can create the deep link manually, right? Um, at some point, maybe you create it on the flight. So what we used to have to do in Glide is we'd have like some sort of action that would create the deep link and then share it out like all in one fill swoop. But now that there's a pattern, we don't need to do that anymore as long as you pay attention to the page that you're currently on as you're building. Okay, so let's say we want to create a deep link for the 3,000 things that we have in this sheet. We're not gonna push the button 3,000 times on each of that thing. That would be ridiculous in order to create that deep link. So is there a way that we can create this deep link automatically? And yes, there is. Just so you can see what that looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a text column, I guess, here in my app. And I'm going to view the deep link here. Okay. So over the past day or two, I've did a little bit of testing and this is the schema that I've started to recognize is how Glide builds out their deep links. So they start you off with the published URL, okay, followed by DL, which is deep link, followed by a six or seven, a six digit, in this case, six digit um, identifier. This identifier is the identifier for the tab that you're currently in. So we see that here, if I'm in the things tab, then this 6471C6 stands for things, okay? So you see that as long as I'm within this tab here, that 647 something's not gonna go away, right? But the moment I switch tabs, like if I were to switch to categories here, See here up in my URL, we now have DL forward slash D0A5F4, right? So you can see how that identifier changes depending upon which tab I'm in. So here we have the identifier for the tab. Then we have S. S stands for screen. So within the things tab, we can have several screens. In this case, this screen that we're in is a detail screen. And as if you know anything about detail screens in Glide is that they are the same detail screen for every item within a collection, right? So I only have to create this detail screen once and it's going to replicate itself across all things within the collection. So that's why no matter which item I select in this collection, the detail screen ID is gonna be the same, this 9E695, right? So we have nine, oop, looks like that one didn't create one yet. So 9E695, 9E695, nine e six nine five so forth right so we have tab id detail screen in this case id okay followed by r which stands for row and then we have the row id for that item all right so it follows a pattern so if i know i always want to navigate my users to a detail screen of this particular item on this particular tab then I can copy this whole first part of the URL. It's gonna remain the same for every single item. The only thing that changes is the row ID, which we can generate with the row ID column. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this first part of the link here. And instead of having to manually create a deep link for every single one of my items, I can generate one across all rows by using a template column. All right, so I'm gonna add a template column here. I'm gonna call this deep link generated. All right, and the template is going to be that first part of the URL followed by some sort of character. I'll do an at sign. And I'm gonna replace that at sign with the row ID. Okay, so now we see we have this deep link value, right? Which has the 647 followed by the 9E6 followed by the row ID. And if I visit this, you see it's the exact same thing. 647, 9E6, then the 9GP row ID. All right, so all of these URLs will point to the detail screen of these items. All right, so just to test this out, I'm going to set my privacy so that sign-in is not required. 
and let's visit one of these links. So I, you see, I did not create a deep link for this silo thing. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the link and paste. And you should see I get taken directly to the silo detail screen. There we go. All right, so what more can we do with this? Well, let's say we add a related thing. I'm gonna add a collection here of things, another list of things. And so here we have a whole other list of things on the details screen of an item. And maybe I'm filtering this list of things um, based along, as long as the category is the same. So the category of this item matches or is the category of the thing I'm currently viewing, the screen category, right? So we can see these are all prisms, but we don't want to show the same item twice. So I'll also hide where the name of the thing is not the name of the thing I'm currently on, screen name. Okay. So now we have other things that are happen to be prisms. All right, if I select this item here, okay, and I take a look at the URL, all right, we have that first, that's that same setup. Here's the row, right? followed by the row ID of the thing. In this case, it's hexy, right? Um, then after that, we have another screen followed by another screen value, followed by row, followed by the row ID of the thing we're currently viewing. So this row ID is of this Hobrox, and then this thing here is the hexy. Right? So if I were to get rid of this first portion, this should take me back to the Hobrox detail screen. Okay, But we can see that if we select another item, right, and we just keep on navigating through here, <laughs> so you see we just keep on going, then all it does is it tacks onto the URL the screen we're currently in, followed by the row ID that we're currently in, and just keeps on going, screen ID, row ID, screen ID, row ID, and so forth. You see the screen ID is still the detail screen, this 9695, 9695. It just repeats itself. So there is a pattern, right, to the whole deep linking that Glide has created for us. Now, this also begs the question, can we create links to other types of screens like form screens or edit screens or add screens? Well, let's take a look. So I'm gonna change this create deep link button to a show edit screen instead. So edit, let's rename this. Uh, edit screen. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL. And we see that we get taken to the edit screen directly here as well. All right. So yes, you can. Here, this, this is the details screen ID, followed by the row ID. Ooh, here, let's actually back up one screen. Okay. So here's the detail screen, followed by the row ID screen, followed by M, followed by a screen number, followed by the row, and then the uh, row ID of that item. All right, so here you see the row ID is here, and the row ID repeats itself. But we have this M value, followed by the screen ID of that value. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. And we should be able to create a um, deep link to the edit screen of these items using that same schema. All right, so this is edit screen deep link. Actually, let's do that way around. So we have template column. We'll paste. And anytime where I see the row ID, I'm going to replace it with an at sign. Right? And I replace that at sign with the row ID. Done. Okay. So now I should be able to visit the edit screen of any of these, right? So I'm going to copy this and paste. And it should bring up the edit screen for that item. Okay. So what does M stand for? I'm guessing M stands for modal. Right. This is a pop up modal screen rather than a full screen, which is probably S, right? Um, only one way to find out, I guess, right? We can try 
opening up this edit screen in a different type of screen instead of an overlay. Maybe let's do a slide in and see if it's any different. So here we have capital S, see that? <laughs> so a capital S stands for a slide in, right? That's kind of cool. Okay, so maybe some of you want slide in, sometimes you want modal. <laughs> you can generate that dynamically using that value, right? So instead of a uh, modal screen, we can have a big capital S for a slide in screen. All right, and so now if I were to copy and paste this in, it should give me this, the slide in screen for that item. There we go. Okay. What about form screens? Can we generate a link to a form screen? Sure, same way. So let's go ahead and create a new button here. I'm gonna say show form screen. Okay, so if I push this button, again, it's a modal screen, right? Where it says add item, um, it's probably still an M, yeah. So in this case, the EF1DE7 stands for this form screen on this detail screen, right? The edit screen modal had a completely different screen ID. All right, so we've seen how we can create deep links, but why even do so? Why create deep links in the data editor? Well, the reason why we want to maybe create these is to provide ourselves some user experience, right? Maybe we want our users to be able to share out this thing to social media or something like that, right? So what we can do is create a button here that says share this item. And I'm going to create a new action where we're going to copy the deep link generated to the clipboard, followed by giving a notification that says link copied. And if we're on a mobile device, we can share out the link. Share link. If we're on a desktop, this doesn't typically work. But when you're on a mobile device, it actually brings up the share menu on your mobile device to let you copy or save it, you know, share it to Facebook or Twitter or that kind of thing. So we'll say share link, done. All right, so now if I'm a user on this item, oh, I can share this item, boom, link is copied, and now I know I can paste it into my social media and have my users get taken directly to that detail screen. All right, so hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can always reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito, and as always, thanks for watching.